Let's bring in Rick Neuheisel. He covers college football, part of uh, CBS's studio crew for the SEC title game between Georgia and LSU. Also in studio for Army Navy. That's next Saturday, December 10th on uh, CBS. And Rick Neuheisel, our good buddy, joins us on the program. Well, tell me, did the committee get it right? I think they got the right four teams, Dan. I just don't think they got the right order. Uh, For Georgia to finish number one and to have to play Ohio State, I guarantee you they would not have chosen that as their opponent uh, in in, uh, the semifinal. But also it's a TV show. That's what I always wonder. Ohio State, Michigan, and you had that in the final four. Look, TCU may be a sacrificial lamb, but that's okay you would have a monster game with Ohio State in Michigan. And and maybe I'm being a, a little too snarky with this, but it is a TV show that they're producing, Rick. Absolutely. And to say, as Boo Corrigan said uh, to Reese Davis, that that never came up, that it would be an Ohio State-Michigan rematch, like that no one acknowledged the elephant in the room, <laughs> that must be a very small room <laughs> if no one said it in the room because it was said – Elsewhere, I guarantee. If TCU had lost by double digits, finish that sentence. Alabama probably nudges in, but as you look at Alabama's resume, as good as we are, as we know them to be, you have to sit there and acknowledge that their best win was probably whether it's the Mississippi State win or the Texas win, and either one of those. The Mississippi State win was a dominant win. The The Texas win was, you know, Bryce Young doing heroic things again. Alabama's outside looking in because Alabama didn't play up to their potential. It's Alabama's fault. Why not have Tennessee ranked ahead of Alabama since they beat Alabama? It's a glitch. It's a glitch. I understand that uh, Tennessee looked horrible in the uh, game against South Carolina and made Maybe you add in that Hen and Hooker's no longer available, uh, but it's a glitch when you're right next to one another, same record, yeah. and one beat the other. Uh, that shouldn't have gone to print. They should have had Tennessee back ahead of them. Do we have a Heisman winner? Uh, is Caleb Williams and then? I think so. You know, at the end, I didn't see the much of the first half of the game. I was at a dinner and unfortunately wasn't able to watch when he got hurt. Uh, I felt like at the end of the game, he was – you know, obviously depressed over what was taking place. But watching the film of the game, Dan, they took the Utah uh, defense, realized he was wounded, and the entire offense went away. The the All the run fits, they didn't have to worry about him keeping the ball. It was uh, it was pouncing on a wounded animal, and, and uh, it was ugly to watch. But Caleb Williams was fantastic from start to finish. We're talking to the former college coach, Rick Neuheisel, who was at UCLA and Washington and Colorado. Col- and Colorado. And Colorado. And now Dion comes in. Your reaction? Well, I'm happy for Dion. Uh, you know, I was with him. Uh, my little brief tenure in the NFL, at the Ravens, that was his last stop along his NFL career. So I got to be around Dion and love him. And I doubt not in the least that he's going to be uh, successful because he's got such a magnetism to him and he'll be caught up in the recruiting world very quickly. What I didn't like is that on one side, he's telling the kids at Jackson State, be careful before you put yourself in the portal because you might not find a home. And then he arrives in Colorado and tells everybody to go in the portal. (laughs) You know, you, you, I brought my own luggage, you know, I'm going to, I got guys that are playing these roles. These are kids and somewhere, somehow, Dan, and I don't know who's going to take responsibility, but we've got 40% of these kids going it put in this portal, whether it's their act of pressing send in the computer or somebody nudging them, as we saw Dion look like that was a giant nudge to the Colorado roster. Who, where, who's going to be on the hook for their uh, education because that's what this was supposed to be about. And I think it's a bigger issue. And I think the, 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 the adults in the room have to uh, sit down and figure that out. Okay. So he, I was surprised that he went to Colorado. It felt like that he had built up a good enough resume that there would be other opportunities there. I know his alma mater turned their backs on him uh, a couple of years ago, but 
Why Colorado? Well, in this cycle, uh, there wasn't another opportunity. There would have been. There's no question the cachet that he was developing as a college football coach was growing, and there would have been an opportunity. But I think he just said, you know, I'm going to start on this quest moving forward, and I, I wouldn't be surprised that if he moves from Colorado to a, to a uh, more prominent position in the college football world, assuming that Colorado doesn't become that. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that Colorado was a top-10 team. Yeah, I understand that you're as low as you could possibly be, but you're also, you know, now these these schools and chancellors and presidents, athletic directors have to look at it and go, there's going to be 12 opportunities here to make the playoffs. And you can turn a football program around a whole lot quicker than we used to. Oh, as we saw Brian Kelly and we saw Lincoln Riley do literally overnight. Uh, they They both had programs that – you know, had the resources with name, image, and likeness and, and uh, the cachet to get into the transfer portal and, and change their fortunes literally overnight. But, uh, and, and, and I'm sure, as Rick George says, I don't have the money now, the athletic director at Colorado, but I'll find it. <laughs> that part of that deal is he's going to find some NIL money to uh, lure people to the Rockies as well. If you're Jim Harbaugh, I know that these NFL rumors have come up Again, I don't know what Jim is doing differently than he did a couple he of years ago. He better not. He better not. <laughs> you can't see a scenario he, where, you know, he got him to the final four and proved that he is a great coach, even though they had him take a pay cut a couple of years ago, that now he, I mean, it feels like the NFL is still there for him, whether it should be or not. Listen, there, there's no question. And how close he wants to get to the flame uh, is is entirely up to him. I think we all admire the job that he's done. He keeps talking about uh, a locker room of heroes uh, and how much he's enjoying these, these uh, relationships with the youngsters. He seems like a guy who's really happy uh, in his own skin. But if this dalliance and this idea of Super Bowl, that his brother has a Super Bowl trophy and he doesn't, uh, keeps luring him to the flame, then then so be it. But the way he talked after getting, you know, a, okay, come back inside, son, you know, after the dalliance with the Vikings to Ward Manuel, I, I don't think, you know, as June said to Ward, I don't know that they're going to be nice to the Beaver again if he <laughs> does it again. <laughs> Uh, Nick Saban, the politician, did his best, but uh, how angry... Do you, is it more anger or disappointment, do you think, with Saban in Alabama? Well, I think it's disappointment. And I think, uh, you know, he doesn't waste many opportunities to learn from mistakes. The leadership on that team, I think, is going to be what's going to be examined. Uh, was there the kind of, you know, uh, what was the, the, the A personality, the type A personality on that team to get that team to understand that, you have to play at the highest level when you go into these because you're always going to be on the hunted list. Now, Kirby Smart on the other side says, no, we're the hunter. And what for whatever reason, they found themselves in far too many close games given the talent that uh, they have on that ball club. Great to talk to you as always. Thank you, Rick. Happy holidays, Dan. That's Rick Neuheisel, part of the uh, CBS studio crew. He'll be in studio for Army-Navy. That'll be on Saturday, and uh, that'll be on CBS. All right.